The Indianapolis 500, pulse pounding speed drama, drawing 145,000 spectators in a starting field of 33 snorting iron steeds, piloted by as many men who for more than four hours go zooming around the two and a half mile oval in blinding pursuit of the fame and fortune awaiting the first to get the checkered flag. But nearing the climax of the race, what? Death stalks the speedway. Swanson swears, Roberts sideswipes him, Swanson thrown to the road, Roberts crashing through the outer fence. Look out! Miller rips through the inner guards and trying to avoid a pileup. Swanson's car catches fire. Roberts is careened through the outer wall. Miller, a number three, alive at the moment. His machine is smoking wreck, liable to burst into flames. Emergency squads on the scene almost instantly recover Swanson's limp form and carry him from the road, where he lay directly in the path of the oncoming machines. Swanson also lives as he's born from the disastrous spot. His car in flames as firemen work dangerously close to the tank still containing their highly inflammable fuel. The remaining cars fly to a slower pace according to the rules. They seem about ready to resume the madcap of speed when again Swanson's car belches forth its enveloping flame. This time the tanks give way and the black plume of smoke signals one of the worst accidents in the 28-year history of the grind. But the show goes on to its scheduled end when Wilbur Shaw gets the telltale sign and flashes across the line, a two-time winner, having garnered the victory back in 1937. So it's an old story to this Indianapolis daredevil whose driving ability and a great car need only one omen to spell a winning combination, that smile from Lady Luck. <laughs>